Although we do have to understand that when we enter this kind of crisis with so much uncertainty, the average voter, and we live in democracies where politicians are responsible to, uh, responsive to the voters, People say, do something, do something, and at least the people who proposed old-fashioned Keynesian policies, and they ignored my advice and criticism or my colleagues' advice and criticism about the same as they uh, ignored that of all the new Keynesians, uh, people who just proposed old-fashioned Keynesian um, uh, solutions to the problem, they were, uh, that was something. And it was useful at the time. Now, we see, and, and, and as I mentioned, I'm, I've been a supporter of President Obama, and I'm kind of a bit nervous about the drop in his productivity, is his uh, productivity, everything's productivity. <laughs> his popularity, his popularity, his popularity, and, but I think it's because that it's now perceived in the United States that a lot of the stimulus uh, spending was just money that was lost, and we're gonna be paying taxes forever, and, uh, and it hasn't really done much. So wh what I think we need to do, and people who disagree with me should be trying to show that, uh, show that I'm wrong, but hopefully playing by some of these same rules, um, we should come up with some kind of consensus so we don't go in to the next crisis, and there, there's going to be one, kind of as blind as we were in this because the only people who got up with a very clear set of recommendations, besides some of my colleagues who said, well, let everybody go bankrupt, and I'm afraid I, that, that scares me too, uh, the only clear set of uh, proposals being offered were by being offered by these old-fashioned Keynesians. And, uh, and their policies were enacted, but I think a lot of the problems that we're having with the slowness of the recovery is, uh, is due to that. We're gonna need better, better data in the models to make this point in another two years, but that's what I think. So I, I was very interested in your observation on Mexico and the directed lending, regulated interest rates, uh, the heavy government involvement in the, in the banking sector, and it reminded me of what you would have seen in most European countries in the 1950s and 60s which is what we know as the golden age, and it's driven exclusively or largely by spectacular productivity growth. Yeah. So as we think about the broader research agenda here, would it not be a good idea to think of those cases where the very same policies that you think are the cause of the Great Depression in Mexico actually coincide and go hand in hand with spectacular growth and not many distortions overall? Yep, yep. Um, Whenever, whenever I'm in uh, Mexico and we're looking at uh, these kind of longer range picture, pictures uh, for Mexico, uh, what, I, what I always note is that people start enacting the kind of policies that I favor, maybe not enacting them well, but enacting the kind of policies that I would favor in the mid-1980s. And, but in this period of time between uh, 1950 and 1980, Mexico was one of the two fastest growing countries in the world when they had very interve interventionist and protectionist policies. So that's a, that's a challenge. I don't have an easy, I don't have an easy solution to, to that kind of thing. What I'm trying to suggest is that when things go wrong, that kind of thing can do very badly. When things are going well, it might happen to do well. And that's my quick answer, but woof, that's a, that's a challenge, to, and, and, and you're entirely right about that. But I don't want to go back to the import substitution policies and the protectionist policies of the, of the 1960s and 70s in Mexico, and I think if we did, things would be far worse. Now, that is, uh, that, 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 that's a very definitive statement on my part, and I need more to back it up, but that's certainly the, what uh, my, my research is going to be aimed at. Yeah. Uh, 